It... it is different. It has been some time. Afraid for you, as I always have been, I will be fine here. Whatever answers the Council have are for you, alone. I am tired. The journey has been a long one, and I need to center myself. Know that much may happen here, but above all, do not forget this. You may trust in me. We cradle each other's lives, and what threatens one of us, threatens us both. And if you find you cannot trust me, trust in your training, trust in yourself. Never doubt what you have done. All your decisions have brought you to this point. And now, perhaps, they shall see what you have become. Did you not go to join her? No, it is a battle that she must face alone. But, Beatrice, she has not come. Of course she has not. There is no battle here. It is for the Jedi alone. And now the exile shall see their blindness for herself. It is what we have fought against for centuries. You... Oh, yes. At last, you see. And what was Jedi is Sith. And what is Sith is Jedi. It is not as it was. But perhaps, that is for the best. We were wondering when you would arrive. This moment has taken some time to reach us, and I imagine you have many questions. Or perhaps you've come for revenge. Now! We will do as we have done. We will wait. There's nothing else we can do. Now the true threat is yet to show itself. It is waiting for something. Us, perhaps, to enter the war. We have seen their soldiers, the remnants of their fleet, but those are symptoms of a disease. It is more bait to attempt to draw us out. The actual battle is being fought through the Force, not with weapons of war. It isn't about the Republic anymore. The attack on Onderon. Something was attempting to use the planet itself. To feed on it. To draw on the power there. You prevented it, but it was a stalling measure. The next time will be critical. If Jedi gather, if we wage war against these... shadows now, then Jedi will die. And we will die for nothing. Whatever this thing is, it must be fought by those strong in the Force. It cannot be fought in any other way. It knows this, and that is why it is killing us. If we die, then it will win, no matter what fleet or weapons are brought against it. The Sith are a threat, it is true. But the threat they present, it is tied to you in some way. The echo we have felt in the worlds we have walked, we have encountered it only once before, when you stood before us at your trial. We believe that somehow you are creating this, or that the Sith have learned this technique from you. She still does not know. She has traveled all this time and never reached her destination. 
answer's already been shown to you. Look at who you travel with. Have you noticed that when you act, others follow? Those that travel with you? They follow you without question, without hesitation. Against their instincts, and sometimes against their sense. You draw them to you, and your actions affect them strongly. It is because you are a leader, but that still fails to grasp the meaning of what I'm trying to tell you. Perhaps not, but it is not that to which I am referring. Surely you are familiar with force bonds. It is the bond that develops between apprentice and master when one truly understands another. It is developed over time through understanding of each other. Such bonds can happen at times of great conflict, or when another Jedi dies close to another. It echoes. And if you do it so easily, and we do not know why. You make connections through the Force, and it resonates with those who travel with you. The resonance is even greater when they, too, are Force-sensitive. Your actions affect others more than you know. You draw others to you, especially those strong in the Force. When you suffer, their spirit echoes it. And when they are in pain, their pain becomes yours. We do not know, but it is not the first time you felt the weight of so many lives. And that is why Malachor echoes within you still. We did not cut you off from the Force. You were merely deafened to it. Because of that last battle of the Mandalorian Wars. The screams of countless thousands, Jedi and Mandalorians, crushed by the planet's gravity, annihilated. Their lives still scream across the surface of that dead planet, and within you. You are sensitive to such things. You have a deep connection to life around you. And when that life dies, then you suffer. Their screams become your screams. And the screams of a thousand Jedi dying, the screams of an entire people dying, are more than anyone who can feel the Force can bear. For one such as you who feels life so strongly, who makes such connections so easily, the silence you heard within yourself after Malachor was not silence. It is death, so loud as to deafen you. You carry all those lives with you still. To hear the Force over such pain, it is not possible. It was too much for any Jedi to endure, and it is a wonder that you did not die there when thousands perished. All those you had fought with and struggled with. You cut yourself off because you had to if you were to survive. You had hints of it in the war on Doxon. Malachor was simply the final blow. You were deafened. At last, you could hear. You were broken. You were made whole. You were blinded. And at last, you saw. When you returned to us, we saw what had happened. You carry all those deaths at Malachor within you. And it has left a hole, a hunger that cannot be filled. In you, we saw a wound in the Force. In you, we saw the end of the Force. Yes. You can feel the Force, but you cannot feel yourself. You are a cipher, forming bonds, leeching the life of others, siphoning their will and dominating them. It is the teaching of these new Sith to feed on others, on other Force sensitives. They are symptomatic of the wound in the Force. You are a breach that must be closed. You transmit your pain, your suffering through the Force. Within you, we see something worse than merely the teachings of the Sith. What you carry may mean the death of the Force and the death of the Jedi. So you think. It is not the strength of a Jedi you feel. He's right. It's all the death you've caused to get here. You feed on it, and you grow stronger. You're like Malachor. It's in you, it's what you are now. You must have noticed as you fought across all these planets, killing hundreds, only to become more and more powerful. Why do you think that was? But what's worse is that bonding you have. It hasn't gone away. It's gotten stronger. And the more attachments you form, the more you draw others to you. And that is why you are a threat to us all. What if other Jedi went to war as you did, suffered the same events, and emerged as you did? 
What if there was a crucible that trained such Jedi to consume and kill? For you, Malachor was that crucible. You have almost completely restored your connection to the Force. But there are cracks, dark places within you that echo still. Our attempts to understand you, to learn what happened to you, are now lost to us. What's worse is the Sith that we face. I fear that they have learned the lesson of Malachor all too well. It is what allows them to prey on Force users, to become stronger when Force sensitives are near. Somehow they have learned their hunger from you. And so you have brought about the end of the Jedi, and perhaps all the knowledge of the Force. But it is of no consequence. Your ability to make such connections, such bonds, so easily are why you cannot remain. And so you wait, as a shadow. Yes, we are alike that way, blinded one. I would have thought you would walk with her amongst the Jedi. But that is not the way of the Sith, is it? Do not speak to me of the ways of the Sith. You, of all of us, have no conception of what it means to be Sith. I have watched you hunger and doubt and drown in fear, and I have borne it all silently. I have felt your lusts and your longing and that spark of hope and longed to crush it. You could have been strong. There is a core in you where light shall never touch. You are a threat to living creatures and all who feel the Force. You will lead the Sith here, and that we cannot allow. Our judgment before remains. Exile. You must leave. And you must leave without your tie to the Force. It is a punishment reserved for only a few, and only when necessary. But we have the power to cut you off from the Force, and it must be done. Forgive us, but it is necessary. Do not be afraid. You shall feel no pain, but this must be done. As long as you feel the Force, you are a danger to those around you. Enough! Step away from her. What? Step away! She has brought truth, and you condemn it. The arrogance. You will not harm her. You will not harm her ever again. I thought you had died in the Mandalorian Wars. Die? No. Became stronger. Yes. Is this your new master, Exile? If so, then you follow Revan's path. Her teachings will cause you to fall as surely as he did. She is difficult to see. She's like a shadow of the Exile. We sought to lure the Sith out, and now they have come to us. As you would pass judgment on her, I have come to pass judgment on you all. Do you wish to feel the teachings born of the Mandalorian Wars? Of all wars, of all tragedies that scream across the galaxy, let me show you, you, who have forever seen the galaxy through the Force. See it through the eyes of the Exile, as I have. Endure what she has endured, and perhaps there is the faintest hope that you will hear what she has heard. How could you ever hope to know the threat you face when you have never walked in the dark places of the galaxy, faced war and death on such a scale? If you had traveled far enough, rather than waiting for the echo to reach you, perhaps you would have seen it for what it was. There are places in the galaxy where the dark side of the Force runs strong. Such places are born of war, of death, of suffering, and if unchecked, their power grows, scream building upon scream, until any who can hear succumb to it or die. It breaks the spirit beneath it, as all wars do. It corrupts all that walks on its surface, drowns them in the power of the dark side. It corrupts all life, and it feeds on death. Did you not hear its call on Dantooine Vrook, on its scarred surface, and in the minds of the settlers? And you, Kavar, so close to the call of Daxan, tell me, did you not feel what poured from the moon, what had taken place there? And Zezkael, to hide upon Nashadar, yet blind yourself to all that happens there. 
So close to understanding the Force. So close to giving it up. Revan knew the power of such places and the power in making them. They can be used to break the will of others, of Jedi, promising them power and turning them to the dark side. Did you never wonder how Revan corrupted so many of the Jedi, so much of the Republic, so quickly? The Mandalorian Wars were a series of massacres that masked another war, a war of conversion, culminating in a final atrocity that no Jedi could walk away from, save one. And that is what I sought to understand. How one could turn away from such power, give up the Force, and still live. But I see what happened now. It is because you were afraid. I have endured your corruption of my other students. You shall not have this one. It is over. No. Now the true war begins. The Jedi is all that united my master and the others. In hatred there is unity. Against a common foe, even enemies may stand side by side. Now they will turn on each other, and the betrayals will begin. They will feed on each other until only one remains. It is more than that. That which waits in the darkness will now show itself. Your master will begin what he has foreseen and hungered for, blinded one. Now the galaxy will begin to die. I am one of the Sith, it is true. I must answer for my actions, and it is my wish that only Atrus hear my answers. <laughs> Take me to Atrus. She will have the strength to do what the Council cannot. What are we going to do? If we don't stop her, then everyone, everywhere, they're going to lose their lives. Soon your ship will come, my master. I will bring her before you, but I will not let you have her. Soon your ship shall come from that which made you. More Jedi dead because of me. But this won't end like the Mandalorian Wars. I won't. I know you can hear me. I have always known you. It is why I followed you. Five. 